Hello and welcome back to Online PTE. This is Jasmine again. And now we are going to look at the last part of the reading test in PTE, which is a gap filling test. And it measures your reading and writing together equally. It does measure your reading and writing. This gap filling test in task five is kind of similar to the one in task four, which is known as drag and drop but uh, th there is like a slight difference the difference is that here for this one as you can see on the second page of your worksheet for each blank you will be given four options and you need to choose only one option while for example for the previous one the, the structure was a bit different and here in reading and writing, gap filling, reading and writing, the paragraphs are longer. You will be given a text or a short passage with sometimes two to three paragraphs. So the passage is longer and for each blank you will be given four options. So these, these are the two big differences. However, marking is still one or zero. Marking criteria for this one is still one or zero. You will get one for each correct answer and zero for each incorrect answer. So as uh, for every reading and gap filling test, what is really important important is uh, you need to look at the blank in relation to the yes in relation to the rest of the sentence and sometimes paragraph so you cannot look at the blank as, as an isolated thing rest of the sentence or paragraph and again as you know you always have to continue reading the paragraph until the end and Another important thing, because this uh, reading and writing gap filling has got kind of longer passages, you have to read all paragraphs. In some paragraphs, there may not be any blanks, but uh, this is not the point. The point is that if you skip the paragraphs, that may kind of uh, make the overall understanding a bit difficult because the text itself is made of, of uh, like uh, three paragraphs. So you cannot like ignore the paragraph just because it doesn't have any blank. Read the paragraphs even though it doesn't, it doesn't have any blank because it really helps you to get a better understanding of the text, okay? Thank you. And again, prediction skill is a very important skill in this one, in this test. Prediction skill means look at the blank, uh, look at the blank and the words that come before and after the blank and try to guess the type of the word you need to fill. For example, you need noun, you need verb, you need adjective, you need adverb, okay? And uh, what's really important is that for this particular test, the elimination technique doesn't work. I mean, you can say, for example, blank number four needs verb. So one of them is verb, three of them are noun. So that obviously I will choose, for example, the verb because the others are noun. Elimination doesn't work for this one. The words given as options, they do have the same function, but the tense may be different. If it is a verb, the tense may be different. If it is a noun, the meaning, the context may be different. Again, what is really important and a very good practice that really helps you is, again, analytical reading. Analytical reading for any gap filling test is really valuable. Analytical reading means read a passage and analyze it into its smaller parts, break it down into its smaller parts. And when you do analytical reading, please pay attention to collocation. For example, if you're given passages about education, uh, how many collocations? Collocation means uh, uh, two to three words that go together and make sense, make meaning in, this, in the given context. For example, let's say, if your given passage is about education, how many collocations you can get? Or if it is, let's say, for example, environment, how many collocations? Phrasal verbs. So, phrasal verbs are another important part of this gap filling test. Phrasal verbs are the verbs that are made of, up like, uh, two to three words together and they make meaning they make sense together uh, prepositions which are like fixed and they do not change okay again to get a better understanding of collocation phrasal verb preposition in a context please do not memorize them in isolation it doesn't help you at all okay if you are going to learn any of these you must have a proper context for that i don't know you can go to dictionaries and learn hundreds of phrasal verbs but what is the use what is the function you don't know you won't learn the use and the function unless you read in a context 
okay so if you are going to get like a better view of collocation phrase over and preposition which you should please download the sample activity from your online portal and there you will know all these uh, categories are defined for you and are highlighted in a given in a sample passage you need to do the same thing uh, for your next uh, like for example texts and as an activity please pause the video please pause the video and do the sample practice test on page two I'm going to explain okay yes how did you go let's read together in any given population about 10% of people are left-handed and this figure remains relatively over time even continual similar or stable which one yes this is the answer is a stable which means unchanging and so-called handedness blank in families but what causes it and why the proportion of left-handed to right-handed people is a constant are still a mystery so-called handedness look uh, it lacks a verb so we definitely need a verb here happens no uh, is no runs yes runs is like a collocation to run in family for example we say wow the beauty runs in your family it's a collocation okay so here we come across a good collocation let's go to next one uh, one thing we do know is that hand dominance is related to brain asymmetry and it seems to be generally agreed that the human brain is profoundly asymmetric and that understanding how this works will tell us much about who we are and how our brains work. Brain blank is distributed into the left and right hemispheres and this is crucial for understanding language, thought, memory and perhaps even creativity. So look, I haven't stopped in the middle of the sentence. I finished the sentence, now I will go back to the, to the blank again. Brain, yeah, brain function. That's the only thing that collocates. So brain, memory, memory, no. Size, no. Capacity, no. Brain function is the only collocation that works here. So as you can see, there are kind of fixed phrases. For right-handed people, language activity is mainly on the left side. Many left-handers also have left side language dominance, but a blank number may have language either more evenly distributed in both hemispheres or else predominantly on the right side of the brain. A what? Maximum? Suggestive? Significant? Countable? No, significant. Again, a significant number is another collocation. So it doesn't collocate with any other uh, words. Countable, suggestive, maximum, no. Just significant number, okay? Because left-handedness is seen as a key to the complex anatomy of the brain, scientists are blank for for links to other conditions including immune disorders learning disabilities and reduced life expectancy are what are researching searching detecting or inquiring searching to search for something means to look for something and it collocates with for a verb and a preposition okay so use and function collocation phrasal verb preposition so you see how these three work in like gap filling reading and writing in pte please please extend your reading at least like half an hour uh, you need to read on a daily basis and to analyze it and if you have any question regarding your activities, regarding the test, regarding the components of the test, please do not hesitate to post your questions on our Facebook page, on your online portal. Our academic member at Turner English will be with you and will answer your questions shortly. Okay? Enjoy your studies and please do not forget to submit your homework on time. We are always waiting for you. Thank you. Bye for now.